sometimes, a lot of times when you're writing your chemical equations, it's really helpful to know exactly what kind of species you have present in the reaction mixture. Do you have a solid, a liquid, a gas? Do you have aqueous ions? Um, you know, what's, what is in there? And it will help you understand how things are reacting over the course of the reaction. So we're going to write uh, what we just wrote was the molecular equation, where everything's listed in its molecular form. And then we're going to take that and split everything up into the ionic equation. We're going to figure out what kind of ions are present. And then we'll look at the net ionic equation, you know, what, what things are actually reacting, what species are actually reacting to make some kind of product. The molecular equation uh, will be the first one. So here we have silver, and we'll do it the same way we did before. I have silver, it has a plus one charge. Nitrate has a minus one charge. So again, you have to know those polyatomic ions. You have to know the charges on all these ions. Uh, Potassium is a group one metal, so it's plus one. The chloride ion is minus one. So over on the, uh, the right-hand side, I, have, I write down my cations. And then I switch the anion. So if silver with, is with nitrate in the reaction and the reactant side, um, it's going to be with the chloride ion in the product side. Again, positive, negative, positive, negative. Potassium now is going to be with the nitrate. And now I will crisscross and write the right formulas and potassium uh, and nitrate here. So my molecular equation looks like this. I know potassium and nitrate are always soluble, so that's going to be aqueous. And I know that chlorides are usually soluble except with silver, so that's going to be my solid. Now to move on to the ionic equation, this is where you look at everything in your reaction and you try to find all the strong electrolytes. So strong electrolytes are strong acids, strong bases, and soluble ionic compounds. We haven't talked about acids and bases yet, so that's the next section. But soluble ionic compounds. So, so ionic means it's a metal and a nonmetal, and soluble means it dissociates into, um, well, dissociating into ions, that, that's what makes it a, an electrolyte. But soluble means it's going to, um, it's, it's, it's going to dissolve. So, you know, nitrates are always soluble, Chlor uh, potassium is, is always soluble. Um, so I'm going to go through each one of these species and, and put a star on it if it's a soluble ionic compound. So these are all ionic compounds. Silver nitrate, nitrates are always soluble. Potassium chloride, potassium is always soluble. Silver nitrate, chlorides are usually soluble, except when you have silver lead or mercury, so this is a solid. I'm not going to give this one a star because it's not a soluble ionic compound. Potassium is always soluble, nitrates are always soluble. So everybody with a star there now, um, for the ionic compound, I'm going to take it and split it up into, into ions. So silver nitrate, right, it's basically I'm, I'm taking this, this top form again. Silver nitrate dissociates into silver and nitrate ions. Potassium chloride, K plus Cl minus. And then silver chloride stays together. And then I have these other two ions. Now for the net ionic equation, um, I'm going to cancel things that are the same on both sides. So on the left-hand side, I have a nitrate, and on the right-hand side, I have a nitrate. On the left-hand side, I have a potassium, and here I have potassium. So those things that I just canceled out, those are called spectator ions, spectator ions. Um, and they're mentioned below here. They're the spectator ions. They are, um, you know, things that didn't really take place in the reaction. So things that didn't change. They were there before, and they were there at the end. Um, so the net ionic equation, right, I'm canceling things that are the same on both sides. So whatever's left over is my net ionic equation. So I have silver, I have plus chloride gives me the silver chloride. So that's kind of what we have down here. We have silver plus the chloride ion gives us the silver chloride. And the things that didn't change, though, that is the potassium and the nitrate, those are the soluble um, ionic compounds. So those are the things that are usually on the always soluble list or usually soluble list. Uh, so what are the steps for writing a net ionic equation? Write the balanced molecular, so that's when everything's together. Figure out uh, who's a solid, if you have any solids. You don't always have to have a solid. We'll, we'll do a couple reactions um, later on where, where you don't have a solid forming. Then you want to dissociate all the strong electrolytes, so go through and find all the soluble ionic compounds, and later on we'll find the strong acids and the strong, strong bases. Give them a star and then dissociate them, split them up into ions. And then you want to cross out anything that um, is the same on both sides. So if it didn't change, cancel it. And then write the net ionic equation. 
So let's try another one. Let's try another one of these. Um, and I'll get you started and then you should pause the video and try to figure out if you could do it on your own. Write the net ionic equation for the precipitation. So precipitation means I'm definitely forming a solid. Precipitation reaction that occurs when you have silver nitrate and potassium phosphate. So if you're looking at those going, oh damn, I was really hoping that we wouldn't ever have to name again. Today is not your day, unfortunately. Um, so let's write these, these words down. You can do this two ways. Okay, so first way you can do you can write silver nitrate. Right, just in words. That's going to react with potassium phosphate. To make to make what silver phosphate and potassium nitrate so you can do it based on the words right to make silver phosphate plus potassium nitrate all right so now you can write all these formulas so silver nitrate what's silver nitrate gonna look like silver nitrate is silver Nit silver has a plus one charge, nitrate has a minus one charge. Potassium phosphate. Potassium has a plus one charge, it's in group one. Phosphate was a polyatomic ion that we had to memorize, PO4 with a three minus. Um, I'm just writing the ions out first, okay? So I can crisscross here, I get my silver nitrate. And over here, I have my, that three becomes my, sus my subscripts, I get K3, PO4. And then over here on this side, now if you have the words or if you just now you have the ions, you know you have silver, then you have potassium, and then now I have phosphate and nitrate. So when you crisscross on that side, you get Ag3PO4 and KNO3. And now you want to balance. So I have, uh, I need to put a three in front of my silver and a three in front of my potassium. Um, what else? I know that they said I have aqueous solutions of silver nitrate and potassium phosphate. Now, which one of these is the solid? I know one of these is going to be a solid. I know that nitrates and potassium, those are always soluble. So that's got to be my aqueous solution. And phosphates are... Um, the silver phosphate is a solid, right? Because phosphates are usually insoluble, except with a couple exceptions, those alkali metals, the ammonium ion, but silver is not one of the exceptions. So this is still going to be solid. All right. So that, this is the molecular equation. This one right here, this is the molecular equation. Now what I want to do is write the ionic equation. So now ionic, how do I do that? Um, so right, I did this part. I wrote the balanced equation. Now I'm going to dissociate the strong electrolytes. So now I have to find, these are all ionic compounds. So which ones are soluble? This is soluble. This one's soluble. This is not soluble. No star for that one. But this one is soluble. And now I'm going to write the, um, dissociate them into ions. So the three silver nitrate means I have three silvers and three nitrates. All right, so I have three Ag plus three NO3 minus. And then my potassium phosphate, that means I have that three comes out in front. I have three potassium ions, because I'm writing the ions, right? I, K3 plus is not an ion, right? This really looks like K plus, K plus, K plus with a PO4, three minus, right? So I really have three potassium ions and one phosphate. I'm going to just erase that. So make sure that you don't just blindly carry out that subscript. That's going to come out in front. Um, this 4 stays with the PO4, though, because PO4 is a polyatomic ion. I'm going to keep the silver phosphate together because that's a solid. It's my only solid in this problem, in this um, yeah, example. I have three potassiums and three nitrates. That is the ionic equation. And you can put aqueous on everything else if you want to, but make sure you keep that solid together. Don't dissociate the solids. And now you're going to cancel things that are the same on both sides. I have nitrates, I have nitrate, three nitrates, I have three potassiums, I have three potassiums. So my net ionic equation looks like three silver plus PO4, three minus, right? And those are both aqueous 
and aqueous, and then I get my silver phosphate over here with a solid. And if you want to identify your spectator ions, the spectators are potassium and uh, nitrate. And you could put the threes in front of there or not. It doesn't really matter. We're just identifying the ion. I don't really care how many are there. So your net ionic equation is this final one here. Um, so we're going to do this process a lot. We're going to look at it next for um, acids and bases. Uh, but this is what it looks like for um, two ionic compounds.